<laughs> if you love money, you're gonna love the subject of our lesson today. This dude was so rich, he could upend a country's economy by just visiting. We're talking about Mansa Musa, probably the richest dude to ever live. Mansa Musa was born in 1280. Next slide, please. This is a European map from 1413 AD. The two gentlemen in the map, the gentleman on the left is Mansa Musa, king of uh, the Malian Empire at its height. He is estimated by many economists today to have been the richest human that ever lived. They estimate he might have been worth, worth as much as 400 billion in today's money. And I'm not saying that like, that's necessarily a massive achievement for Africa because one person being rich and being a king sort of probably implies some form of oppression, usually. But as far as kings go, Mansa Musa was said to have been a fairly decent king who gave away a lot of uh, uh, money, gold, uh, to, to poor people, particularly on his pilgrimage to Mecca. He gave away so much gold in Egypt that it took 10 years for the price of gold to return to normal. That's how much gold he gave away in Egypt. And part of the mythology about Timbuktu and about this wealthy black kingdom was a result of Mansa Musa's pilgrimage to Mecca and all of the uh, rumours that spread around the world and particularly around Europe at the time that was going through the plague and the dark ages and all kind of other madness while Mali was fairly rich. They heard about this, this, there's this African king down there past where the Moroccans live. We need to go and find that guy because he's getting some money. Now, the gentleman on, your, on the right was the ruler of the Moors. Why have I picked this particular image? Because the way that history has been racialized, even in the modern world, the, uh, for those who don't know, by the way, Spain was a Muslim country for 800 years. So African and Arab Muslims colonized Spain in 711 AD until 1492, the year Columbus set sail. For 800 years, Spain was a Muslim country. No one thinks to teach us that in school. But because there was a forms of race-based slavery in the Islamic world, some of the scholars have deliberately yeah, kind of distorted the empire in Western Africa. Uh, or there were four concentric empires, rather. The empire of Ghana, which was, today would be in the country Mauritania, but is where the country Ghana takes its name. Then Mali, which the empire of Mali at its height spread all the way from Senegal deep into Mauritania, 1,500 miles across, probably the most wealthy empire in African history other than ancient Egypt. And according to even mainstream scholars like Felipe Fernandez Armesto, the richest state in the 14th century world. This is uh, one mosque slash university from that empire. This particular one is the Grand Mosque of Jene. Has anyone ever heard of a place called Timbuktu? Now, did anyone else think Timbuktu was a made-up place when they first heard of Timbuktu? I know when I was young, I thought Timbuktu was a made-up place. Turns out Timbuktu was a real place, and there's a university still standing in Timbuktu in uh, the ancient Malian Empire, but there's good reason why we think of Timbuktu as being magical, um, as we're going to come to a little bit later. In uh, the Malian kingdom, there are still three-quarters of a million handwritten manuscripts surviving. Three quarters of a million to this day, containing all kinds of information. Now, one of them was brought to the attention of the world by Michael Palin in a BBC programme called Sahara. And he basically says, I'll paraphrase here, but he says this document, which is from the Kingdom of uh, Mali at the time, clearly shows the phases of the moon. The problem with it is, is that it's 150 to 200 years older than the birth of Galileo and Copernicus. So it makes us think about the entire history of science in an interesting way. Again, that's not me saying that, that's Michael Palin saying that. If you've got beef, take it up with Michael Palin.